We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Why are people pulling their money out of banks? Why are banks failing? Why is Bitcoin up? Why isn't gold up more? We'll tell you. What's going on in interest rates? And how can you develop a watch list to help you follow what's going on? Want to answer to these questions? Stay tuned. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And please hit the like button. Do it. All right. Let's welcome who's on the stream. We have Block Connect. Boris here from New Jersey in first. We have, huh, Go Army, Beat Navy, West Point Investment Club appreciates you. Man, oh man, when I grew up, the guys who went to West Point or the point, it was like, so we salute you, sir. Okay, AZ, legend, right? <laughs> Robin says, I made it in the beginning. Please give me the truth bomb. No problem. SFG. I'm thinking she's thinking GLDN and Bark. Commodities on the blockchain. Don't forget Block 47. Don't have to put ETH, cash it out, put it in a bank, put it in diamonds and gold. It's coming. Rave Song Records, Block Connect. Nico, appreciate you liking the show. Big Rich from Middle Georgia in the house. Ashley, give me some love for dedication. Kenneth from South Dakota is here. I think it's time to move to South Dakota, man. Like into a missile silo. Like no joke. Okay. Andre says, crash. GF is here from Hamilton, Ontario. Philip giving me notorious and sheepdog love for keeping y'all out of the way as best I can. Matthias from Switzerland. Father Beck is here. D, Steve J, Iron Alien, Steam, Cuboid from New Zealand. Right? Slow Ride, Greg, Bull Runner in the house. Welcome. Big Rich is like buy gold, silver, Bitcoin, lather, rinse, repeat. Couldn't agree more. What is going on? What somebody tell me, somebody help me and tell me what is going on. If that's what you're thinking, I'm going to try to help you. I actually know this guy who knows a guy who helped really distill this down in, in simple terms so that people can understand it. And I'm hoping this helps. Okay, probitcoinsolutions.com slash noble, the link below for taxes, okay? 199 for each report, discounted down to 149, $20 per token. It stands to reason that you would want to pay the government before there's any potential problems with your bank account. By the way, if you can still see me, wave, okay, I'm back. Pro Bitcoin Solutions. These guys used to do Bitcoin forensics, used to help people find lost Bitcoin. There's the obvious case to do your taxes. Then there's the other obvious case that the IRS is not going to care that you're waiting for money from the FDIC. Pay your taxes. Do it now. Okay. What is going on? Tell me. That's what you're saying. That's what my girlfriend is saying. So far, I haven't been able to come up with an adequate answer. I mean, I know what's going on. It's a repeat of 2008, but how can I explain it to you? So this comes from Ben Hunt, courtesy of my friend, Andy. This is like a synopsis. There are $17 trillion worth of deposits in the U.S. system. By the way, if you want to know what chat GPT-4 said about what happens if that $17 trillion one third of that flies into Bitcoin. You want to stay tuned for that. 17 trillion in deposits. Uninsured deposits, meaning people underneath 250K, are looking for any reason to move to the safety of a big bank. A negative narrative about small banks, weak banks, banks in trouble in Europe, whatever, any distress causes a common knowledge game. I love this. 
that forces depositors to act as if it's true. So if one bank appears to be in trouble, it may be all banks appear in trouble. Credit Suisse has been in trouble for a long time. It's a known fact. Well, not as known as it is today. Common knowledge. We haven't even gotten to the Japanese banks yet. This forces people to act as if the problems are true, whether they're true or not. Any sign of liquidity stress for a bank. In other words, bank lines, you know, we only have 20s, not hundreds. Zell's not working. Tweets. Any sign of stress can trigger a slow motion bank run. Like, okay, now we're going to start pulling my money out, right? Like I, I'm doing, I'm doing a certain amount of money every day at the cash machine, right? I can walk right into the bank branch. And you're like, oh, how are you doing? Yep. Doesn't look like it's caught on yet. Nope. Okay. Take some money and go home. If banks say, and you will all know this, if they say, don't worry, everything's fine. Then they try to raise capital like Wells Fargo. Like, hey, we're going to, we're going to file papers to raise $9 billion if we need to. Okay. Well, I guess that's good. They know there's a problem, but how big is the problem? Is it a $9 billion problem? No, it's a $17 trillion problem. So if they go, everything is okay. We're just going to raise money anyway. Everyone goes, okay, everything is not okay. Let me just pick up my phone and go boop out. That's why people are buying Bitcoin. That's why Coinbase's stock is up. I think the only reason that stocks are not down more is that people may just be FOMOing into S and P figuring S and P could go down 20%, but that's better than having all of your capital disappear. So this common knowledge thing leads to banks having to be possibly pay out on $17 trillion in deposits or more. Just give me an excuse. Or as a popular police character in the 70s used to say, go ahead, make my day. Just give me a reason. So if you want to know what's happening, that's what's happening. And this applies to the bank stocks too. One bank stock is down, boom. They all go. All it takes is a negative news headline. And by the way, if anybody wants to talk about downgrades, S&P and Moody's always downgrade stuff when it's over. It's over. We'll try to look at stocks, bank stock charts, so you can start to get a flavor of what you can look like. And of course, look at for your bank. And of course, we'll also talk about crypto and what we've been talking about, about crypto, which is your altcoins might not make it. Be careful of speculative assets. Force buying in Bitcoin could force Bitcoin a lot higher. Bitcoin could dramatically outperform ETH as much as that sucks, right? There could be a buying climax in Bitcoin for the next two weeks, which then leads to a very sharp correction in April. Now, one of the things we want to pay attention to when it comes to this is about the nature of forced buying. You're like, Bill, do you mean forced selling that you were talking about earlier? No, that was when Gensler was at it. That was forced selling. And as you can see, when the forced selling was over, the market just levitates higher. Okay. Forced buying can be the same thing. The market can just go straight up. But when all the forced buying stops, there could be a correction. I don't think we're there yet, but I'm planting these seeds in your mind. Okay. I don't think anything is going to stop Bitcoin. And I have no idea why gold is not much higher. Matter of fact, the fact that gold is not much higher means people are in denial. And as you would have seen on my Twitter this morning, every big mistake starts with denial. Do you realize in the military and special forces, it is really, really hard to train your mind that something bad is about to happen or that someone is trying to hurt you on purpose. The human mind is not geared towards these concepts. Like if there was a saber toothed tiger standing in front of you, your body would know how to react. But if it was another person trying to harm you 
or it was a mysterious problem that you didn't necessarily understand. It's very hard to react and denial is easy. There are a lot of people out there that are telling you not to panic. I'm not telling you not to panic. I'm telling you to act, right? Act. Don't act like this is not happening because I left this slide up here so you could see that there are 17 trillion reasons why this is happening. And this is going to be a worldwide phenomenon because if there's a problem over here, I mean, can you imagine if we're doing Credit Suisse when we get to the Italian and the Spanish banks? Forget about it. This will live forever, right? When they're telling you everything is all right, it's not. Which is why you tune into this show and hit the like button, right? Tune in to this show when they tell you everything is all right, it's not, and tune into this show. Going with the laughability of the herd, rising interest rates are good for bank stocks. So they could take your money that they pay you nothing on and invest it at 2%, 3%, 4%. Oh, wait a minute. People, people want to get paid money on their deposits now. Uh oh, uh oh, what are we going to do? We bought bonds at 3% and interest rates and everyone wants 5%. How are we going to do that? Everybody has group think. Everybody gets in the pool. Everyone thinks the same thing. Everyone gets in the pool and then they throw the toaster in. Don't think like everyone else. Crude oil discussed this yesterday in the Gold Retriever Telegram group. 7350 had a hold. It cracked. Oil goes down 8% recession imminent. Okay. It's just like 2008, right? In other words, at some point you look at this, uh, banks are going to be unwilling to lend money when this is all said and done. You know, the economy just tanks. This is what happened in 2008. And this could be worse because it's at the retail level, not the institutional level, right? In 2008, it was your 401k getting wrecked because stocks went down. In 2023, it could be your bank account getting wrecked, which is why, to repeat myself, cash, crypto. Precious metals, if you can. Give certificate to Target, Walmart, grocery store. Give certificate to gas station. Okay. Common sense. The yield curve. You guys, remember everybody saying, oh my God, the yield curve is inverted. The guy from the big short going, oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> Right. Yield curve was inverted in May of 2000. Dot com blows up. Market goes down for two years. Everything goes to zero. 2008, yield curve inverts. Lehman, every big investment bank except Goldman, basically has a solvency crisis. Government has to come in and take over with a $700 billion bailout. This time the yield curve gets massively inverted, meaning hot short-term rates were higher than long-term rates. As predicted, Jay Powell, when you hike rates the way you hiked rates and threatened to keep hiking rates, you break everything. I know you were trying to imitate your hero, Paul Volcker from the eighties, but this isn't the eighties. The system's way more fragile. You can't take rates from zero to 5% and be like, wow, you mean everything blew up? Yeah, bro. Everything blew up. Now this is the 0% line where the two-year note and the long bond would be equal. What you'll notice here is that this is like May, 2007, and this is like December of 2000. So when you see interest rates go from the yield curve, go from inverted to uninverted. That's when it kind of hits the fan. In other words, you're like, Bill, this is not hitting the fan. I'm like, no, this is not hitting the fan. Not according to this. This is just still in the warning zone. This yield curve goes positive 
and people start saying Fed rate cuts are coming, everyone's like, oh, yeah, rate cuts. No. Okay, rate cuts, good. Good for crypto, better for gold. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, but not bad. It's bad for this situation because, you know, Powell has to reverse himself because, remember, the Fed is a very political institution. One, they would prefer to print money. And two, they can't be seen as the creators of this debacle. Now, is the government going to use this to take over the banking system? Uh, okay, that's, that's stuff people are talking about. It's not the worst idea in the world. But the problem starts with the Fed and the blame game. And if this problem is worse than it looks, remember, denial, bad. If the Fed cuts rates, they're telling you it's a disaster. Or if the Fed doesn't tighten, they're telling you it's a disaster. Or if they don't tighten and come out with, we'll take care of this by any means necessary. You start hearing that stuff. Yeah, okay. Bitcoin will go up, right? Gold will moon. But you got to be really careful about very risky assets. Every risky asset is not going up because the Fed cuts rates. You may have Bitcoin hold and gold smoke higher, but speculative assets will be iffy. I'm hoping ETH and Polkadot and things like that make it, to be honest with you. I think ETH is going to make it only because MetaMask is so pervasive. You can transact with MetaMask if you have to. I'm much more of a MetaMask ETH guy myself. But I can appreciate the need to just get parked in Bitcoin. Because like I said, ChatGBT4 gave me all these complex equations. But I finally saw some math that justified Kathy Wood's $1 million price target for Bitcoin. I mean, if 30% if of, the, of the money that's in banks moves into Bitcoin and interest rates go back to 0%, you know, you get some stratosphere of calculation for Bitcoin. So yeah, that's good for crypto. It's great for crypto. But how do you survive the volatility in the short term? And does Bitcoin at some stratospherically higher prices plow the whole altcoin space over? We talked about this yesterday. Not only should you be looking at VIX on TradingView, but move. Bond market volatility is now back where it was in 2008. Today, you had the largest down move in European interest rates in quite some time, if not ever. Massive movements in interest rates, which will cause a hedge fund blow up at some point. But if you have interest rates moving like this, you have a problem. What if 1% of pension fund assets make their way into gold? Total pension fund assets worldwide are $56 trillion, according to ChatGPT. This last bullet right? If gold is at $1,800 an ounce and 1% of this money, 560 billion goes into gold, you're looking at something like $32,000 an ounce for gold. You imagine where Bitcoin would be if gold was at $32,000 an ounce? No one's even talking about these price targets. No, no one is talking about this. No one, which is why I want to talk about it. Right? Remember how Charlie said, you know, everybody's like, oh, group thing. Interest rates are great for bank stocks. Yeah, okay. Until they all blow up. Hybrid eclipse. No one wants to hear about this. I know. On April 20th, there's a hybrid solar eclipse. Means people on different areas of the planet will see different pictures in the sky. Every single one of these occurrences before between 1800 and 1900 led to some sort of financial panic because of tightening moves the gold standard, dollar crises, commodity market fraud, you name it. 86 was a dollar crash and an oil crash, both. Okay, 87 was a bond crash, which was followed by a stock crash. 94 was a bond crash, followed by a municipality going bankrupt, Orange County, California. 2013, government shutdown. 2005, massive up move in commodities, oil and metals crash in grains. Could be the reverse this time. This does not resolve itself. None of these occurrences resolve themselves in two days. 
you're sitting there going, are we there yet? No. This is what I'm telling you. That's why I'm not popular sometimes. This is not over. This is just starting. So the question is, what are you going to do? GLD, gold. Okay, looking at DeMarc work, there was good support, 167. Okay, GLD, I know this is paper gold, but we're on a DeMarc 4. And if they take out the high, there's plenty of room here for five days up. Normally, you're supposed to buy stuff on a DeMarc point at a 4. That's the chime to sort of like wave it in if you believe it's really going to go. Okay, these little numbers. Um, it assigns a set of conditions. It comes from a quantitative technical analyst named Tom DeMarc. So if the high was higher than the high one day ago, or for example, you get a one. And if that condition was true the next day, you get a two. And frequently you move up to a nine, then you'll either top out or pause. And then there'll be another set of conditions between one and 13. Like it happened here, right? Here's one through nine. Here's a pause. And then one through 13. Okay. This could be big in gold. Every big mistake starts with denial. You want to know what the big mistake is? Everybody is blowing off as to how high gold or Bitcoin could go. Or how high Bitcoin could go at the expense of the rest of the crypto market. Silver. One, two, three, four, five. Like. Up only. Gold stocks, the gold bugs index, HUI. How long do you really think gold and gold related equities are going to sit down here given this situation? That's the quickest, dirtiest way I can describe it. GLDN, I work for a group called Emerging Asset Group. I hold GLDN, I hold Bark. GLDN is a very small cap play. It pays you a reward in gold. It's going to be the native token of a commodities ecosystem. And it's going to be the way you buy a water token. Michael Berry, big short, 2008. When it was over, he covered. And what did he invest in? Water. So far on the 30-minute chart of GLDN, really, this is the first time we've had something to talk about in this. Looks like we have a five-wave structure up and ABC correction down. So this looks like it's trying to start an uptrend. 50 cents is a big level. Every altcoin's not going to make it. The group I work for wants to put hard assets on the blockchain. What do you want? Crypto, hard assets, a combination of that, or a bank deposit at First Republic? I have to leave that in your capable hands. USA sovereign credit risk from two days ago. The market is assigning a high pro a higher or the highest probability of a U.S. government debt default going all the way back to Lehman. Higher than Lehman. Right? The integrity of our entire system is at hand. And this is a lot harder to deal with than you think. You know, even if you're a prepper, you know, you got canned food, you got defense, you got Bitcoin, you got gold. Yeah, but you still got to go shopping, right? You still got to like function. You know, how much cash can you have on hand? I mean, you can, but there's a point where the stress level gets so high, even amongst the prepared, which is why it's important to be prepared mentally, be nimble. And if I may say so, tune into this show. And that's the market update. Okay, I'm going to news next. Okay, going to news next. Okay, so Credit Suisse. Sparks a monster route in European bank stocks. Okay, hopefully we're seeing this, Financial Times. Credit Suisse is a giant Swiss bank. Oop, wrong screen. Okay, 
Got a problem with the software freezing up today. Okay. You seeing Credit Suisse now? Yes. Okay. Credit Suisse shares slide sparks route in European bank stocks. Credit Suisse has had a problem for a long time. They've been taking money from the Saudi sovereign wealth fund. The Saudis are like, we're not bailing you guys out anymore. Credit Suisse is a huge institution. They've got investment banking, trading, lending, private wealth management. Credit Suisse shares tumbled 30% today. Okay. Chair of the Saudi National Bank, which bought a 10%. In Credit Suisse last year said, yeah, sorry, we're stopping out. Not doing it. Not doing it. SVB mess demands a rethink our government bailouts. There has to be a better way. Fascinating, right? They're talking about a better government bailout. You know what? The government isn't looking at it as a bailout. They're going to funnel everybody into three or four banks. They're going to tell those banks that the government is going to tell them how things are going to be, or the government will shut them down or regulate them into oblivion. Trust me, I've seen this. And then you'll have a CBDC, which is why we should be cheering for guys like the head of legal at Coinbase. Remember when the SEC was going to put crypto out of business? <laughs> Funny, right? Yeah, they're going to put crypto out of business. Why? So you can put your money in a bank. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how fast in this day and age, dumb ideas get purged. Consumer spending is challenged by high inflation as retail sales fall. This is the type of environment where everyone sits home and just hides. Cause I noticed this morning that Netflix is up 3%. When Netflix is up, no one's going out anywhere. No one's going out anywhere. 30 year mortgage rate retreats for the first time in five weeks. This may be the only bit of good news out there. People may be like, you know what? Uh, I think I'm just going to overpay for real estate. This could happen if you can get a loan, of course. Right. In other words, rates might fall and home values might fall at the same time because no one could get a loan. That's what happened in 2008. But I can see people FOMOing into hard assets like real estate. I can't see it. But, you know, with what's going on in Silicon Valley and the number of layoffs that are coming, I mean, you think you got layoffs in Silicon Valley. What is going to happen to the total number of people employed by Wall Street and the banking system? Oh, my God. I mean, you cannot. I mean, you know, like this is hard to look at. You know, you cannot have. Wells Fargo down 4%, JP Morgan down five, Credit Suisse down 20, right? Banking index in the U S down 5%, right? The only thing that's up today is Schwab, right? The only thing that's up today is Schwab. Unicredit, this is a big bank in Italy. Blowing through, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, blowing through bottom Bollinger Band, filling a gap. And the key is with your bank is you want to find your bank when it's just starting to do this. So you can make decisions before it does that. and goes from 200 to 13. That's First Republic. Okay. You know, Credit Suisse weekly been down only for a while. Just like slowly dying. This is Credit Suisse weekly.
Okay. Because I have this huge watch list here of all these different bank stocks, right? Like the Spanish banks, BBVA, right? Took out its old high and then turned around and just reversed. Santander Bank, same thing. Massive resistance at a gap, false breakout. And if you look at the daily chart, as if it could get any uglier, you have a blow off top. And this is all unconfirmed new highs. So you have lower high in stochastics and higher high in price. This is Santander. Okay. Like, remember how I say these divergences don't resolve themselves in a day? They don't. Okay. JCH, good evening from Qatar. Okay. Let's get into crypto. Okay. So here's some good news. I know we need some. Bitcoin is holding the 38% retracement of its launch from 20K. Okay, this is on a 90 minute chart. The launch started March 11th. Maybe you got another day of a range. This feels like it's going to make a base on top of 24K, right? It's kind of common sense. This was resistance. There was this false breakout here. This was a previous fourth wave. Bitcoin is, is holding. Bitcoin may be down. But as you can see by this candle, everybody is looking to grab it on a dip. It seems like, right? And if you look at your basic D wave, right? You have one up, two down. You know, maybe you get a flush to 23,700 or below it. Or maybe they're just like, you know what? I'm not even waiting for the 38% retracement. I'm grabbing it right now. Right. They may get after this thing, something serious. Right. Now I'm hoping ETH goes with it. So let's talk about ETH because that's kind of the question, right? Like what's going to happen to altcoins? What's going to happen to my altcoins? Okay. So the great news is on a 90 minute chart, ETH looks really good, right? You go up, you have a 13 top, you come down, you retrace 38%, you have a nine bottom. Uh, I, I kind of like this look. It's a good look, right? If you look at ETH on a daily chart, okay, so you had one through nine bottom. Now you're on a four. Normally when you're, when you're in this setup, right, the trading setup is that you want to buy the dip on the four count. Hope it holds and then turn around and have it go up for five straight days. Right. It's true in ETH and it's true in Bitcoin to a much lesser degree. Bitcoin strong like bull holding above a DeMarc point at 24K. So, I mean, you know, I don't think today, you know, you shouldn't have bought altcoins the other day. And I don't know that puking out ETH today is the right idea either. Is the right idea either. Right. Now let's switch over here. Back to gold. Okay. The extent to which this is going to smoke higher, actually the fact that they were panicking and buying the dollar today uh, is somewhat, it's, it's predictable, but it's also comical. Okay. From a trading point of view, just using hidden pivot analysis, not investment advice, you've got support at 1888. If that holds, I can draw a hidden pivot target to 2136. And I think it goes way beyond that because remember, you've got the teacup and handle formation on the gold monthly chart, right? That has a target of 2,800. Gold handle handles on teacup and handles are miserable. This handle has been in place for a year. Miserable. 2,800. Okay. Now let's go to altcoins. I know you care about. Okay. So let's start with Solana. And now you're going to be like, well, what's he doing? 
And now I'm looking at Solana versus Bitcoin. Because I got news for you. If you're looking at an altcoin and you're not looking at it versus Bitcoin, then you're doing yourself a disservice. So Solana versus Bitcoin. Okay, the 62% retracement is coming up. Okay. Solana on a regular chart, just like versus the dollar. Okay, ironically, it never got to the 62% retracement, which was down here at 1523. So if altcoins get smoked, this actually has room to get to 1523. Don't buy euphoria. Don't sell despair. Despair may come in Solana. Okay. I did see somebody wanted avalanche. Okay. Again, this goes back to fib numbers. 62% is 1526. I do not want to see avalanche below 1526. I do not. Right. In other words, the good news is Bitcoin trades pretty good. The bad news is. Bitcoin trades pretty good. <laughs> okay. I think there's going to be strong demand for crypto. I just don't know what crypto. Okay. So again, avalanche on a daily chart. The good news is, I guess it's a great buy on a four, if that's how you're looking at it. Okay. I have a really hard time not liking this. Let me see if I can get something on a 90 minute chart. Okay. So again, some decent news, right? Every altcoin won't make it. That was yesterday's comment. Now that altcoins are getting cracked. Okay. Avalanche holds the 62% retracement at 1545 and it's got a nine bottom and it's got good looking candlesticks here. So, okay. Hey, somebody's interested in buying crypto. That's good. Right? Matic. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. I'm just a hater on Matic. Sorry. Okay. Goes down. Doesn't quite make it to 62%. That could be considered good. I get people might want to buy this because, you know, this could be like an NFT entertainment platform. Very bullish that 108 held. I think I had a 106 target somewhere. Okay. Two more down periods. Uh, you know, this, this looks like everybody got euphoric about crypto and they ran the stop. So even though I make jokes about this, this is, this is constructive. This is constructive. Okay. Okay. So Gala Games looked great yesterday. Everything looks great when it's up. Looks terrible today. Okay. Except if you draw fib retracements and it hits 62% to the number. So a positive day for crypto could be coming because rate cuts could be coming. But every altcoin is not going to make it. And if this pro if this price action has not driven that home, okay. So Bitcoin dominance, which is something I wanted to bring up, which I didn't, so I'm going to. Okay, and y'all best think about this hard. Okay. So first off, let's look at the Bitcoin dominance daily chart. Okay, so this is btc.d. And to state the obvious, Bitcoin dominance has broken out and there's absolutely no resistance because it went straight down so it can go straight up. This is 44%. Okay. This is 48%. I don't see what stops Bitcoin dominance from going to 48%. And then if you do, you know, zoom out on BTCD, you're like 
44, 48%, who cares? On a weekly basis, this is drum roll. The bigger the base, the higher into space, right? This is 2020 altcoins web three outperform Bitcoin dominance goes into this dormant basing period. And then when this thing comes screaming out above 48%, it's going to 72. So that either means you have absurdly higher Bitcoin and gold, which would work for me. Okay. Or you have a, an absurdly strong uptrend in Bitcoin with speculative assets getting wasted two or three times a week, like now. So it could be speculative assets in a range, speculative assets down. I hate to say it, but this also could include ETH. Don't mess around with this chart. Don't be in denial about what can happen. Now, if you're sitting there going, oh my God, what am I going to do? Let me tell you something. You got company. I'm sitting here at my desk. I wake up every morning and I'm like, well, what should I do now? Should I try to transfer money into Coinbase, hoping that that transfer actually goes through because it can take five days to clear? Should I go down to the bank and pull out more cash? Should I go to Whole Foods and buy another gift card? Should I call my daughter in Europe? And hope that's okay. I mean, like I sit here and I go, all right, what am I going to do? And then you know what? I do something like the Bitcoin dominance chart and your altcoins. Like if you don't know what to do, you don't have to have the whole cosmic holistic plan. Just make sure that if Bitcoin dominance goes from 44 to 48 to 72, that you make money or you're not wrecked, right? Or you're not wrecked. Okay. Donato asking about Nano. It is a question of time before some retailer starts accepting crypto. This is what I think could possibly save and help save ETH. Right? Or just web three in general. I mean, if you have a systemic debacle, the disillusionment with the system will be extreme. Okay. 62% in nano is at 0.788. Okay. So I said, don't buy euphoria, don't sell despair or sell euphoria buy despair, not investment advice. It's pretty good support right there. Pretty good support. You know, everybody like bailing out, right? Right. Spin says DARPA has got a CBDC ready to come out. Of course they do. Of course they do. Right. Cardano. Okay. So on the 90 minute chart, you got a nice nine bottom. These like intraday signals have been working. This is very much like 2008 where really, you know, you're spending most of your time on lower time frame charts. You know, I don't like the fact that Cardano could not hold 62%. I don't, you know, I wish it was different. I wish it was different. Hey, Cardano has got to get back above 73 cents. I'm sorry, 33 cents. Got to get back above 73 cents too. I know. Okay. XRP kind of like this nine bottom. I'm sure I'm not going to like the fib work. Like Cardano, it kind of sucks, but you know, 36.36, 36 cents above that XRP could be okay. Okay. Also for XRP, this could be one, one, two, three, four, it's kind of outside the box, but five. I, I can see a new high in this, and I think XRP has been delivered from regulatory pressure with all this going on. That's that's just me. That's just me. Okay. Phantom. Now 
Now, somebody will make it in DeFi. We we'll saw some really interesting Uniswap news. Okay, so Phantom retraces 62% of its up move, and you can see people trying to buy it at 37 cents. So again, you know, don't buy resistance. Don't buy resistance at 48 cents, but there's good support and good D wave down here at 0.378. I want to look at Uniswap. It was telling me all this cool stuff about Uniswap before we went on the air about how you can like, it's integrated with like Binance Smart Chain, which is cool, right? Nice Uniswap bottom at 62% at 578, right? I mean, a lot of this looks the same and that's fine with me. Nine bottom on this candle. So the worst thing that can happen in these altcoins is that you get a failed rally. You don't want that. Again, beware the failed rally. Failed rallies in environments like this are bad. 90 minute sushi, you got a nine bottom on a really nice DeMarc support point. Sure, the daily chart is not that pretty, but again, you're buying the dip on that four. Do not underestimate crypto at these levels. Yesterday up, bearish. Down today, bullish. Bitcoin, probably up only. Probably. King is like there's less than 100 likes. What? Come on, man. Come on. How the hell are you going to survive this? Without the market update, if I may say so. Iron Alien said, my camera got frozen. Sorry about that. Crypto Future is here from Bangalore, India. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, Algorand. Jeff is like, I'm late. Jeff, never too late. You're never too early. You're right on time. So uh, saw some hate about Algorand online. Algorand mysteriously disappearing out of wallets. I guess that's kind of like the banking system. 62% retracement just below 20 cents. So it was not a buy up here. It might be a buy down here. If it's not a buy down here, you got serious problems. This is just like 2008. Everyone gets euphoric, sell. Everybody goes into despair. Think about doing a trade. Thinking about doing a trade. Polkadot, forgot about Polkadot. Okay, I'm sure this DeMarc picture is going to look similar. Okay. Cardano was, uh, Polkadot was unable to get the support at 573. Okay, the thing about Polkadot that is interesting to me, let's go over here. Okay, so when you start looking at Polkadot, right? Okay, when you start looking at Polkadot, okay, you've got this big downward sloping structure. And there's a couple different ways to draw it. That's one way to draw it. Okay. So interesting that Polkadot did this like move where Polkadot comes down. This is pretty brutal right? Comes down, breaks out. So the breakout was tough because it, it was a big fight here. And there was a big fight there again at around $6. Now, Polkadot is kind of hanging on here. Polkadot can hang on at $6. I can see, say, I can see saying something positive about Polkadot. But it remains to be seen. The DeMarc work on the down days Things always look better when they're down than when they're up. Okay. Then when they're up, Bart, we appreciate you tuning in laughing dolphin. Okay. 
Laughing Dolphin does not want to think about crypto without the market update. Sir, we appreciate you. And we cannot wait for the day when you have 25 or 100,000 people who think exactly the same way. Okay, STX. Okay, again, focusing on this 90-minute chart. Most of these things are coming down either to a DeMarc support or a FIB support or both. So you've got a nine bottom and this bows for this thing to all turn around. The worst thing that could happen is that you get a failed rally. This rally fails tomorrow, then this is going to go lower. In the meantime, this feels like crypto can turn around and go higher. Let's just check where the market is right now. Okay, so Bitcoin's down 1%. Okay. Okay. Some American banks are up, Schwab's up. Okay. VIX is coming off its high. Stocks are actually not the end of the world. We didn't cover stocks. Okay. Interesting that, you know, in the stock market, this zone is still holding. Okay, if you go to hidden pivot work in stocks, depends on how you want to draw it. One guy online that I really like, Jim Bianco, was saying that what the Fed does coming up is S&P dependent. Really kind of like this idea. 3,800 is a key level, right? That's the bottom of the range here. Okay, it's a hidden pivot target. If S&P hits 3,800 is, is holds, the Fed may just hold tight and talk dovish. The Fed hikes rates or talks hawkish. Well, forget about that. But if S&P winds up somehow below 3,800 by this next meeting coming up on the 22nd, then you're probably going to have Fed rate cuts. Fed rate cuts. Yes, I said that. Okay. Okay, compound. That's pretty funny. Like DeFi protocols are very, like intellectually, they feel very appealing. And I could stick my money into some decentralized entity. It's like, I feel like, I feel like my bank account is more risky than Bitcoin. Seriously, like, you know, crypto's up, crypto's down. Everyone's like, oh, crypto, the volatility kills it. Yeah, okay. Well, how about your bank account, which can be binary between full and zero? I know four-hour chart of compound, there's decent support at 40 and a half. People may go running around looking for these DeFi protocols and stick money in them. In other words, you can't really come off chain with money. So it's that old saying, money's got to go somewhere. And Tito is reminding you to like and subscribe on the way out. Okay. Every big mistake starts with denial. Do not be in denial as to what's happening here. Do not buy euphoria. Do not sell despair. Okay. Gold and Bitcoin seem like obvious choices for asset allocation. I think even stocks are better than cash. Crises like these do not resolve themselves in one day, one week, one month. That's the lesson of the solar eclipse research. Everybody's altcoins are not going to make it. Okay. So you may have to make portfolio adjustments. That doesn't mean you have to sell your altcoin when it's down 15%. You just have to evaluate your portfolio. At the end of the day, gold, decentralized money, and Web3 will make it. If Bitcoin dominance went to 70%, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It would be a giant banner in the sky like the bat signal going crypto, Bitcoin forever. I can live with it. I can live with it. Because you know what? Now we're all not a bunch of clowns. We were a bunch of clowns that Gary Gensler was going to take down. Well, that's over, right? Bitcoin is bigger than SBF. Crypto is bigger than the clowns that caused all our hair to go gray. No matter what you do in this environment, 
Stay tuned for the market update. Protect yourself. We'll see you tomorrow.